Consider the velocity time graph of a particle shown below. Calculate the displacement of the particle during the first 12 seconds. So how do we do that? How do we find the displacement of a velocity time graph? Here's what you need to know. The displacement or the change in position is equal to the area under the curve. Let's say we have a rectangle. The area is basically equal to the length times the width. Now let's say if we want to calculate the displacement during the first four seconds. The velocity is basically the length of the rectangle and the time is basically the width of that rectangle. So if we replace L with V, W with T, we get that the displacement is equal to the area under the curve. These two are going to be the same. So that's a simple way to think about it. So let's go ahead and calculate the area for each section. So what I like to do is I like to break up the problem into rectangles and triangles. So let's calculate the area of this rectangle. It's going to be 20 times 4, which is 80. Now for the triangle, we have the base, we have the height. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So for this triangle, the length of the base is the difference between 4 and 6. So we have a base of 2, and the height of the triangle is 20. So half of 2 is 1 times 20. This is going to be 20. Now here we have a rectangle. This rectangle has a width of 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. And it has a height of negative 30. So negative 30 times 4 is negative 120. The reason why it's negative is because it's below the x-axis. Now this is 12 seconds, not 125. So that's an S. The time is in seconds. To calculate the area of this triangle, we can redraw it. We have a base of 2, a height of negative 30. So 1 half times 2 times negative 30, that's going to be negative 30. Now, in order to calculate the displacement during the first 12 seconds, we simply need to add these values. Now displacement is a vector, so it can be positive or negative. So we're going to add up those four values. So the displacement is going to be 80 plus 20 plus negative 120 and then plus negative 30. So 80 plus 20 is 100. Negative 120 plus negative 30, that's negative 150. And 100 minus 150 is negative 50. So the displacement is negative 50 meters. So that's the answer for part A for this problem. That's how we can calculate the displacement. We simply need to break up the graph into rectangles and triangles, calculate the area of each section, including the negative areas, add those values up, and that's going to give us the displacement. Now, part B, how far did the particle travel during this time period? So the question, how far, we're looking for distance and not displacement for part B. To calculate the distance, it's very similar to calculating the displacement. You need to get the area under the curve. The only difference is distance is always positive. So what we're going to do is all of the negative values that we have for area, we're going to make them positive. So the total distance traveled is going to be 80 plus 20 plus 120 plus 30. So this is going to be 100 plus 150, which will give us a total value of 250. So that's how far the particle traveled during this time period. 
So now you know how to calculate the displacement of a particle using a velocity time graph. Just remember, the displacement is the area under the curve. By the way, for those of you who want more example problems on velocity time graphs, position time graphs, acceleration time graphs, I'm going to be posting some videos in the description section with more example problems like this. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.